Good evening. You're watching the main news on HAIBC. I'm Cheryl Yun. Here's a look at our top stories tonight. Hong Kong's daily caseload remains below 10,000, but authorities say it's too early to call it a trend. The Urban Renewal Authority hits back at accusation that it's been inefficient due to the pandemic. And the late Queen Elizabeth II begins her long journey back to London. Daily COVID cases in Hong Kong fell below 10,000 for a second consecutive day. Despite the decrease, health officials have urged people to stay vigilant. Joanna Ho reports. Hong Kong recorded 9,033 new infections today, down by almost 800 from yesterday. Of that number, imported cases took up 129. Despite the drop in daily new infections, Communicable Disease Branch Head Chuang Shokwan said it will still take some time for officials to confirm whether this decline is the new trend. She cited two factors to consider, whether cases of the BA.5 subvariant have reached their peak yet, and whether there will be a rebound after the mid-autumn festival holiday. She was also asked if the government will consider making it mandatory to report positive RAT test results. This is not yet um, compulsory by law at the moment. We would like the people to, to report. So we don't want them to feel that it is an optional. Meanwhile, hospital authority chief manager Larry Lee said the number of hospitalization cases has remained stable at between 2,000 and 3,000. But he said officials are remaining vigilant as the situation can take a quick turn at any time. He said a plan to raise the number of beds at Asia World Expo to 280 after the current three-day holiday remains. On a separate note, authorities have discovered three infections from the tuberculosis and chest ward at Kowloon Hospital. The trio are all males aged between 63 to 84. The ward is barring visitors for now and has stopped accepting new patients. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. The funeral of the late former Security Secretary Ambrose Lee is taking place at Hong Kong's Universal Funeral. A long list of top officials were seen arriving to pay their last respects. They include Chief Executive John Lee, Chief Secretary Eric Chen, and Financial Secretary Paul Chen. Many of the city's political and business movers and shakers were spotted as well. Apart from being the city's security chief, Lee also previously took on the role of immigration department head and the ICAC commissioner. After his retirement, he, was, he served as a local deputy to the National People's Congress. He passed away in his sleep at his Sha Tin home last month at the age of 73. As Hong Kong faces increasing pressure both internally and externally to open borders, Finance Chief Paul Chen said an improved vaccination rate is key to achieving that. He also expressed hopes that the upcoming batch of consumption vouchers will help reboot the economy. Chloe Feng reports. Writing on his weekly blog, Financial Secretary Po Chen reiterated that effectively controlling the pandemic is fundamental to stabilizing the economy. Border restrictions can only be loosened if the city's vaccination rate improves. Around 74 percent of the city's population is triple jabbed, while the rate of those aged 80 years old or above stands at 51 percent. That was a conclusion he made as he pointed out signs of woe in the city's economy. Chen said prices for local residential properties have dropped by 5 percent from last September's peak. Its trade volume also dropped by nearly 40 percent in the first eight months of the year. That's coupled with a weakening stock market and dampened consumer spending locally which has led to businesses placing little hope on mid-autumn festival sales as pressures mount. But, he said, the upcoming batch of consumption vouchers will inject over $15 billion into the market, giving the economy another much-needed shot in the arm. 
Those will be handed out on October the 1st. In terms of external factors, Chen also made a warning about the U.S. Federal Reserve, which is expected to issue another aggressive 75 basis point interest rate hike by the end of the month. Local banks may be pushed to adjust their prime lending rates, which could add to the burdens of home buyers and small and medium sized enterprises. On another note, Chen said applications for the silver bonds designed for senior residents have reached a record high with 290,000 bits. The inflation protected bonds' $45 billion offering size this year is also 50 percent larger than last year's. Chen revealed about 65 percent of the applicants are aged between 60 to 69 years old while the other 35 percent are aged over. Chloe Feng, HKIBC. The Urban Renewal Authority has denied there is a backlog in cases for the Smart Tender Building Rehabilitation Facilitating Scheme. It comes after the program became embroiled in controversy when residents of a building in Chen Kuan O accused it of being ineffective. Joanna Ho reports. Taking to his blog today, the Urban Renewal Authority's managing director Wai Chi Singh made it clear things were smooth sailing at his office. He said the URA had approved about 1,000 smart tender applications over the past year, and services had not been disrupted by the pandemic. He denied there was a backlog in cases and said the authority has not been struggling to handle them effectively. His post was in response to a building maintenance tender case for Chen Kuano's Chir Lam Estate, which was included in the mandatory building inspection scheme in 2019. Residents were dissatisfied with the owner's cooperation for not applying through the smart tender scheme and raised suspicions of bid rigging after tender prices returned at a minimum of $170 million last month. But the corporation defended itself by saying it did not use the smart tender platform because it was complicated and time-consuming. It also said authorities were unable to handle applications promptly due to a backlog from the pandemic. But why called these accusations a fallacy? He said his team typically sends out a confirmation three days after receiving an application and a service agreement is usually signed within two months if approved. To settle the issue, Y said his staff have already reached out to the estate's consulting company. They met with the owner's corporation last Thursday and have been invited to the next owner's meeting to further explain the process. The URA's Smart Tender Building Rehabilitation Facilitating Services Scheme was launched to assist local building owners with rehabilitation work, enhanced with an online platform for procurement at a cheaper cost. As of the end of July, over 2,600 applications were approved since the launch of the project. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Overseas. A hearse carrying the late Queen Elizabeth II has set off on a six-hour journey from Balmoral Castle to Edinburgh. Her body will remain at the Scottish capital until late Tuesday for the public to pay their respects. The Royal Air Force will then carry her back to London, where her funeral will be held on the 19th. Earlier, her grandsons William and Harry and their wives Catherine and Meghan made a surprise appearance at Windsor Castle. It's their first joint activity since Harry and Meghan stepped away from royal duties in 2020. The newly minted King Charles III, meanwhile, hosted top UK officials for the first time since he was declared the monarch. President Xi Jinping has sent him congratulations and said he would be willing to work with the king on improving relations between the two nations. Ukraine is hailing a small victory after forcing out Russian troops and reclaiming key areas in the east. If held, 
it would be one of the most significant advances the country has made since its invasion. Winner Wong reports. In an emotional moment for soldiers, the Ukrainian flags waved once again over Balaklia, a Ukrainian city in the country's Kharkiv region. For months, the northeastern oblast that sits on the border with Russia had been controlled by enemy forces. But a surprise Ukrainian counteroffensive that began just a few days ago has been highly successful. Kyiv released video of similar scenes from the city of Izum. Ukrainian tanks were seen rolling into the area, while evidence of intense fighting lie about. In his daily video address, President Volodymyr Zelensky said his forces have reclaimed around 2,000 square kilometers of territory from the Russians. The Russian army in these days is demonstrating the best that it can do, showing its back and, of course, it's a good decision for them to run, he boasted. Moscow, meanwhile, has admitted its troops have pulled back from the Kharkiv region. Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konashenkov said soldiers are regrouping from Balaklia and Izum to focus on Donetsk, another border oblast in the east. If Ukraine manages to maintain its hold on Kharkiv, it would be one of the most significant advances since the war began seven months ago. Earlier this year, its forces also managed to thwart Russia's attempt to overtake its capital, Kyiv. Winawang, HKIBC. Elsewhere in Ukraine, the last reactor of the beleaguered Zaporizhia nuclear plant has been shut down. According to Ukrainian state-run operator Energoatom, the plant has now been completely stopped. One of the power lines were restored last night allowing workers to turn off the sixth reactor. The operator said this is the plant's safest state, given prolonged shelling in the surrounding area. The nuclear plant was overtaken by Russian forces early in the war, but is still run by Ukrainian workers. It has been forced to go on and off grid for some time now, and there were fears it would eventually go into a meltdown. On to the weather now. It will be hot and hazy with high levels of pollution in congested areas. Temperatures will range between 27 and 34 degrees. Expected to be fine and dry on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Cheryl Yun. Thanks for watching. Good night.